I want to go cry in a puddle of tears. It's too cold to do that. The tears will probably freeze to my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. That was crazy. That was freaking amazing. I just listened to chapter 19. I feel like I'm only updating you on the steamy parts, but like, it's, it's a lot. Why is Sergi Mash trying to get us all in our feels with this book? Like, <laughs> get us all in our feels with this book. He was crying and she was crying and I was crying. <laughs> That broke. <laughs> Let me try another one. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And it went out. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a cool shot. It's not working. <laughs> there we go. Please light now. Okay, we have lit. A candle, meadow, bouquet, a candle. And this is what you're gonna see for good portions probably of this vlog. Um, hello, uh, if you didn't know, I'm trying to hold the candle up to get some lighting because this is the only light source that I have right now. Um, my name is Avery and um, literally in almost two hours, uh, the new Accord of Thorns and Roses, Accord of Silver Flames comes out by Sarah J Mass. I also live in Texas. And um, we're having rolling, rolling power outages um, because of the snowstorm that is happening <laughs> all this week. Um, so uh, this is my only source of light currently. Um, you might see some clips with the lights on because that's when the lights are going to be on. But they like cut the power at this point every 30 minutes. It's already been a journey with this book for me. <laughs> So the way that I planned on getting this book was I have two online classes on Tuesday and I planned on in between my two online classes just driving to Barnes and Noble and picking up my new copy because that's what I've done every single time I drive to the bookstore and pick it up because it's a very awesome experience for me. I very rarely drop ship Sarah J Mass books because I love to go into the bookstore because I rarely buy a book for full price anymore. I rarely ever do that. <laughs> and so the one time that I do I really want to like experience it in a bookstore. And then Saturday hit and I was like, huh, I think this storm is gonna hit so I don't think I can go drive to um, Barnes and Noble if it's gonna snow in Texas. Y'all, this is the fifth time, maybe fifth time, I have seen snow in person and I am 22. So um, <laughs> it's crazy. I decided on Saturday to pre-order the book and seeing if maybe that would get to me by the time it released on Tuesday and it says it won't get here until Friday and that's probably a lie because uh, no one is driving right now because it's really dangerous. <laughs> also for you northerners who are like saying like oh it's not that big of a deal like it's just snow. Number one we don't have any snow plows. No snow plows, no way to remove snow like at all and there's no salt on the roads anywhere, nowhere. We do not have the means to get anywhere. The, the roads are slippery and dangerous so if you're a northerner saying to southerners like chill out it's just snow we are not equipped with this our power is out because we don't have gas heating <laughs> we have air conditioning the south has a bunch of air conditioning north doesn't have air conditioning i bet if y'all came down here when it was 100 degree weather y'all would freak freak out <laughs> y'all freak out if it gets to 80 degrees and that's like a cool day for us so zip your lip <laughs> It's 58 degrees in my apartment right now because our heater won't work. So this is freaking cold. So this book is obviously not gonna be shipped to me tomorrow. Well, first I wanted to get the audiobook because I love listening to Sarah J Mass audiobooks. Um, but I looked at the price of the audiobook on Audible and it is 30 bucks without a credit. And my next credit isn't until February 24th and i'm not waiting that long i'm trying to read this whole entire book tomorrow 700 something pages all day because class is canceled for tomorrow and i just think the lord is talking to me lord lord is sending a snowstorm my way so i can read all this book in all in one day because i was actually really worried about not reading this book because i have a bunch of schoolwork to do but school's canceled so <laughs> so i'm planning on 
reading it all tomorrow. I got the Kindle book. I pre-ordered the Kindle book for nine bucks, um, which is way better than spending $30 on an audiobook. Even though it'd probably be faster for me to listen to it. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> I already spent 20 bucks on the hardback version and I'm waiting for it to come to me. So I'm trying to read it all tomorrow and get this vlog out to y'all as soon as possible because I know that a bunch of people out there are like me and they binge read these books pretty fast. And so they want to know what other people are thinking. And that's how I feel about with Sarah JMS books. So um, I wanna get this video out as soon as possible to y'all. I'm gonna go sit in my bed uh, and maybe take a little nap before midnight. It is currently 10. And so I'm anxiously waiting for this book to drop because all I'm gonna be doing tomorrow is reading and the power is going to be on and off and there's no wi-fi i can't do any school work no wi-fi at all and if they don't cancel school on wednesday too <laughs> i don't know what to do <laughs> like i don't have wi-fi to do any homework and my hotspot for my phone doesn't work because um we also don't have any internet connection well we have some internet connection it comes in and out but like i only have one bar i can barely text people right now love that for me okay so i'm gonna go chill with my candle by my bed and anxiously wait for this book to drop. Okay, candlelight again. The power is out again, but it is 11.56, but I just checked my Kindle and it is here. It is here on my Kindle. It's not midnight yet, but it hit. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna get to reading. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, I just read um, the prologue and chapter one. That took me forever. I haven't read an ebook um, in a very long time. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe like as I want to finish this possibly all day like tomorrow but it's gonna take me forever if I physically read it or on my phone so I may cave and um get the audio tomorrow I the audio won't download like right now it's like midnight and it says that you have to like pre-order it so I don't know when it's gonna be released it says it'll be released on February 16th it is February 16th. So maybe it's a specific time on February 16th. I don't know. The prologue was about Nesta being put in the cauldron. And oh my gosh. That part was so sad. Uh, I hated it. Ugh. That's just, that's just going through a lot. A lot of crap. Um, a lot of crap. And I believe chapter one was the last chapter of A Quarter Frost and Starlight, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe some more was added to it. I don't remember. But that chapter seemed really familiar. The ending little section definitely was the end of it. I don't know if SJM added more. Yeah, I'm just still reading this by candlelight. Um, it is 12.30 on the dot right now. Um, I might pre-order the audiobook and just figure out whenever it gets delivered to me. I'm very excited though because I don't know what's gonna happen with like her going to the camp with Cassian. Like I wanna know how, I wanna know what's gonna happen. I'm very excited. I just want like her to explore her powers. That's like my main thing besides her relationship with Cassian. I want her to explore her powers, get with Cassian, and then also like I want a more vulnerable Nesta and I want her to form a better relationship with Feyre. Like that's the main things I want, main four things that I want out of this. <laughs> we'll see if I get it. Good morning. I am freezing. Um, so I... Uh, read to chapter four last night on my Kindle and then I got really tired and fell asleep and I woke up around Nine because the power turning back on woke me up. <laughs> Even though it's off again right now um, And I'm freezing my butt off. I immediately started listening to the book because last night the audiobook wasn't released yet and I decided to um, do that thing you can do in Audible where you can buy three credits for like 30 bucks, I'm pretty sure, or 35 bucks, which was the whole price of the one audiobook. So I returned my Kindle book and I got three credits. I used one of those credits on this audiobook because I realized that my Kindle reading speed is not as fast as my audio listening speed. I am really enjoying this. I am currently on chapter 14 and oh my gosh, a bunch of things have happened. So Nesta is um, now living in the house of wind because that's what Feyre and everybody else was telling her to do. You have to live in the house of wind, you have to train with Cassian, and then you have to work in the library. So she's been doing that. She finally did one thing of training, one thing of training, um, where she like, like learned to stand up and use her feet correctly or something, which is very, very true. People don't normally like think of that when you train and everything. I had to go to physical therapy for my chronic illness when I first found out about it. And 
one of the first things they had me do was learn how to walk again correctly because I was doing it wrong. It kills you. It kills you just walking a different way. We're getting a lot of Nesta like in her feels. <laughs> like um, thinking about the past, thinking about her mother, her father, their deaths and the King of Hyvern and just a lot of stuff always. She has a fear of the fireplace being on and I really love her relationship with the house right now. It's pretty funny and cool. The house is like making sure to take care of her. Something that I found really interesting is we just passed a chapter where um, I forget her name but she's like a priestess in the library is telling her about Valkyries and something I noticed was like the chapter sections like se there's like four parts of this book each part is like a, a Valkyrie term I'm pretty sure so is Nesta a Valkyrie is Nesta a Valkyrie <laughs> we will see um that's my theory at this point I don't know I don't really know a lot about Valkyries if it's not from the Immortals After Dark series or her powers are from another world like that priestess was talking about because apparently like her boss is looking at a bunch of different worlds could maybe one of those worlds be crescent city and throne of glass sorry if the lighting's really weird the snow in front of me is like bouncing off <laughs> Um, cause there's just a bunch of snow in front of me currently. I'm also trying to preserve my battery. It's not been on airplane mode all day because, um, I only have power, I think every 30 minutes and then it turns off. And so, um, I've been trying to preserve my battery cause right now I'm at 38% on my phone. And it's hard to like do things while the audiobook is playing, um, because my hands are freezing. I really need to redo these braids. <laughs> okay, I just finished chapter 16. They are talking a lot about the blood rite and they talked about what the blood rite is and everything. A theory of mine is that, I don't know, maybe um, she's gonna go through it? Who knows? They're talking a lot about it. So I just assume that one of the women in this group is possibly gonna go through it because um, like Cassian clearly said, how women don't do the blood right because of the horrible things that other men going through the blood right can do to them and they have no power no weapons nothing to defend themselves so who knows maybe she will have to go through the blood right that's a theory of mine i'm really happy because like nesta is like talking to cassian about um bringing the priestesses up to train and learn how to defend themselves and i feel like that's going to be awesome and hopefully a few of the priestesses agree to it but I'm I'm liking her slowly starting to open up to him. We're we're doing it. It's happening. I just listened to chapter 19. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really good. Really really good. Really good. <laughs> Dang. Why'd they freaking stop? What? Mm, at least something's happening. Something better than nothing. Even though I didn't want them to stop, though. Feyre <laughs> uh, just told everybody that she's pregnant. And that it's a boy. I don't think we knew it was a boy yet. I don't think we did. Or if we did, I am dumb and don't remember that. But this book just gets better as it like goes along. Because all we've had so far is her like training and Nesta complaining. Apparently she's two months along. I think they said it takes a year for a fake pregnancy. So she has to be pregnant for 10 more months. I wonder if like the rest of the series we're going to get her giving birth to this baby. I'm super excited about that. <laughs> OMG y'all, I'm so dumb. I just listened to literally the next second and they were talking about the bone carver telling her, like showing her a boy. And I was like, I'm dumb. Of course, of course it's a freaking boy. The freaking bone carver said so. I'm just dumb and I forgot. <laughs> okay, update. I am almost done with part one. Um, I think I have one or two chapters left, but the scene just happened where Cassian returned the favor. <laughs> Dang, that was crazy. I just squealed at something Nesta just said. This is after she just had her training session with both Azriel and Cassian and she was like, I wonder what it would be like to be between the two of them. <laughs> like, I thought that SJM was gonna actually write that scene. I think she said that, and I think she said she took it out, or that scene is waiting for 
as his book. I don't remember. If you remember, please let me know. But she either said she took that scene out of the book or she's planning it for another book with as with two other people. That's gonna be good. <laughs> it just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> the, the steaminess just goes up and up after each occurrence. <laughs> I just read chapter 26. Dang. They keep getting interrupted or they're never able to continue and it like... <laughs> it's frustrating me. I want to get my hands on like the physical copy of this book so badly, but I will probably won't get it till like the weekend or after that because of this storm. It's still freezing outside. It's 58 degrees in this apartment. I mean, hopefully there's no school tomorrow. So I don't have to do any homework today and I can just continue reading it, but we will see. I don't have any internet right now, no Wi-Fi, so I can't even do the homework even if I wanted to. I just finished chapter 29 and that's the part when, um, sorry for my crazy hair. I'm going to redo it soon. <laughs> I'm too busy listening to this book. I just got to the part where Nesta was having that nightmare after scrying and then Reese comes in to calm her down. And the last thing he says in that chapter is, her power is death, pure death. What does that mean? What does that mean? I do love right now how um, Nesta is opening up, sorry, the camera's moving, Um, how Nesta is opening up to Cassian and how she's making friends. I just want her to get on a better level with her sisters because she's being a real, bad word to them <laughs> but i love her making all these friends and befriending the priestesses and helping them like come out of their shells and it's so cute but i can't wait for some more <laughs> nessian stuff um but i'm very interested about her powers i'm very very interested we are now in chapter 31 <laughs> we just found out that Farah's baby has wings and that uh it is dangerous for her to give birth i don't think that she's going to die i don't think sjm would do that to us like she would literally have a riot on her hands wow that's gonna be a lot for everybody and dang 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 um nesta's like taunting cassian and then she's like i'll let you f me anywhere in this house uh when uh, she is able to finally scry <laughs> My lord, this is getting like She did say this was her steamiest book yet and like the book is pretty steamy already. Yeah, I've just been sitting here um, Making my uh, 2021 shout out mug right here. I have to fold all these pieces of paper while I um, Listen to this book. I am I think halfway done at this point because I don't have an internet connection to do any of my homework. I need to find out how to get connection to email my uh, professor because she's saying that stuff is due tomorrow and um, I have no internet connection. So I'm gonna go do that and listen to this book. I am going to listen to it all today. I think I only have five hours left in the audio and it's gonna happen. It is two o'clock, 2.30 right now. I'm gonna finish this. I can't wait. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the, the freaking Kelpie scene just happened. Oh my word. <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. That was crazy. That was freaking amazing. If I could curse right now, I would. I would curse because that was freaking amazing. Oh my gosh, y'all, this girl. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. That Kelpie sounded terrifying terrifying man did she rip that head off good job good job nesta good for you chapter 37 <laughs> they finally freaking did it <laughs> uh, i want nesta to get over the stupid thing like of just doing it and like actually want to be with him she already likes him why can't she like that chapter was absolutely insane <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think the lack of steaminess that was in Crescent City is making up for it in this book. <laughs> Y'all. 
I'm loving it though. Dang. Dang. This is like the level of steaminess that's in like a regular steamy adult romance book, which is saying something because that's normally a lot. Dang, that scene was really good. <laughs> it was really good. We're only almost half, we're over halfway at this point, only a little bit over halfway done. I'm excited to see what else they're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all, this is killing me. This is killing me, but I'm loving it. Chapter 41 is steamy as heck. Oh my word. <laughs> I feel like I'm only updating you on the steamy parts, but like, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> um, wow. Okay then. I forgot to update you on like what I thought of like the kind of like um conflict going on I'm, I'm a little confused with the conflict going on i know that the queen who was put into the cauldron in i believe agamath she like hates nesta because nesta went in before her and took out a part of the cauldron and turned that queen into a crone and she's like old and gross and so she has like the same um maybe powers as nesta i don't i don't really know i don't really get it but apparently she was looking for that golden mask. Yeah, that whole scene with the ma with her getting the mask, I already touched on it, was absolutely insane. With the um, Kelpie and everything. And her like basically wielding death. That was a freaking awesome scene. I freaking loved that scene. It was insane. But I'm just a little confused on the just the queens and everything. And also more is not in this book. <laughs> Like, where is more? Like, more was in there for maybe like three scenes tops and not for a long time. Like, where is she? Like, where is she? Helion is in the city now because um, they wanted to ask him questions about the mask, and then Helion was like, That mask freaks me the F out, get it away from me. Because he thinks maybe one of his ancestors put it on because a bunch of other people who have since worn the mask are not able to take it off but nesta has been i think like the only person that's ever been able to take it off her face because like calls to like and their powers are were formed from the same being which was the cauldron i am thinking that maybe since nesta is talking about uh maybe like leading a group of women in like battle and stuff maybe she'll bring those women to i believe that's the blood right that's what it's called that they were talking about earlier in the book where the Illyrians go to like become like a full-blown mature Illyrians by going through the blood rite or whatever that women are advised not to do because they could get assaulted <laughs> what if she takes all those women on that journey who knows let's see if that happens that scene that sh that just happened that oh my gosh that was good where um Cassian and Nesta and I think Eris, that's his name, are meeting in the woods and then Tamlin comes and then Nesta's like, you are a piece of crap. <laughs> she threatens him, shows him her power and is like, amazing. She's like, you're the reason why all of us are effed up. Like, you're the reason, like, w this all happened. You are at fault for everything, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> I'm loving the House of Wind, like, taking care of Nesta. <laughs> it's so cute. He's like, here, have a bunch of soup. No, I'm not letting you leave the house until you eat the soup. <laughs> and Cassian's even like, that. the house doesn't normally do that. <laughs> and then the house reads a romance book. And the house likes romance books. That is hilarious to me. I love that. I love it. I'm currently trying not to cry. The scene just happened, um, where Nesta <sighs> finds out that they've been lying to her this whole time about those swords and everything, and she goes to Amran's house, and then Feyre comes, and then she tells Feyre that everybody's been lying to her. Her reaction lit makes me want to sob. <laughs> I am not looking forward. I don't even know if we're gonna get that scene of Feyre confronting Reese about that. That literally on the verge of tears. Dang. If that would have gone on any longer, I would have full out sobbed. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and then Nesta was saying how she had gone too far. She shouldn't have said that. She'd gone too far. And that like Feyre loved the baby that had not even been born yet. 
way more than her mother ever loves her. I want to go cry in a puddle of tears. It's too cold to do that. The tears will probably freeze to my face right now. <laughs> Speaking of which, I have to go fill up some buckets of water because our water system may get cut off. So, I have to go fill up buckets of water so I have water to drink. <laughs> So I'm gonna do that while I'm listening to this. <laughs> okay, we have the power on for a little bit. It's about to go out again, so I thought I'd update you. I am on chapter 56 at the moment, so we're on part three. They went to the prison. Sorry if there's like smoke. Um, I made soup really, really fast <laughs> on the stove before the power went out again. Yeah, they went to the like prison and they got the harp. That scene was really cool. I like the harp like powers like that's really cool and um the freaking dude that she like slayed he was disgusting <laughs> he was gross that scene i forgot to update y'all about after one of the scenes that like was really sad it was when they when 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 she went on that hike with cassian and she like broke down afterward oh my word and i just finished the chapter where they go and visit her cabin in the human lands and that whole scene. Why is Sergi Mash trying to get us all in our fields with this book? Like, <laughs> get us all in our fields with this book. We are currently having power at the moment, so I thought I would update. Um, but I just read chapter, I think it's 58 or 57. It's whatever the one where they like get together and admit their feelings. And that's just like, the reason why I pushed you is away is because I can't bear the thought of losing you and it would break me if I lost you. And he was crying and she was crying and I was crying. <laughs> we still have a chunk of this book left. Like maybe like 20 chapters left. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared. If this doesn't end in like a happily ever after or a happy for now, I'm gonna be kind of upset. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm still gonna read the next book, but, like, I'm gonna be upset. I thought that these, like, books, like, that continue on in the series from now on, like, wrap up the love story of each person in each book. So I think this concludes Cassie and Anesta. I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> I was just freaking out about that scene because that was good. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, my gosh. And that gift that Azriel got her, I want that gift. I want the bookmark that lights up. <laughs> that gift the casting got her. Oh, I want to cry. That was really good. And then freaking Eris at that freaking dance. Like, was just like, yeah, I'll do whatever you want as long as I get the girl. I was like, Bleh. screw you. You're disgusting. You're disgusting. Sorry if I've been sniffly this cold weather and like the heat not working. I think I'm gonna get sick after all this stupid stuff going on. We also found out that I don't have school for two more days, but I'm having I'm gonna have an issue with uploading this footage because um, like uploading it to YouTube because um, I don't have connection. I'll try my hotspot, but I don't think it's gonna work. Like the internet here is like kaput. I have an, an hour and 45 minutes left in the audio and I can bet you it was about to kill me. It's about to kill me. I knew it. I knew it that they could do the freaking blood rite. I don't know if they're actually gonna do it because at the end of the chapter they were like, I'd rather be a Valkyrie than um, an Illyrian. So I don't know if they're actually gonna do it. There's not that much time left in the book, so I don't really know. I wonder if Feyre's gonna give birth in this book. I don't know because months have passed. I don't know how many months have passed specifically, but I'm very curious to know if we're gonna have that birth by the end of this. I love her friendship with her two friends. Oh my gosh. Like she's saying how like these friends that she's made have been the friendships that Feyre made with her family. Like this is her family. And the little charms that they did together. That was so cute. Oh my gosh, I wanna do that with my friends. <laughs> I just, I love these friends and they work together so well and they push each other and they challenge each other and they bring each other up and they lean on each other and them getting through that obstacle course and showing the Illyrian like leader or whatever that they can qualify for something. They're women and they can qualify. They're not less than any other man. Like I loved that. 
I loved that. <laughs> okay, the power is out again, so you just have to see me with a candle. Um, oh my gosh. Um, part three just ended. Part four is upcoming. Um, oh my gosh. The, the freaking Illyrian freaking jerks took the girls when they were sleeping and is are making them go in the blood right. Oh my gosh. I am so scared for those women. Oh my gosh. Like I they're gonna make it out of it. If Sarah J Mass kills one of those girls, I am going to be livid. Livid livid and then Cassian just said that they're mates but like I'm kind of confused on that because like the whole thing with like when Reese and Feyre became mates like Reese immediately knew I don't know if Cassian really did I'm kind of confused with that if that makes sense because like he said oh we're mates when he like was with her on Starfall like he knew that they were mates but I'm kind I'm just confused because like Reese knew they were mates before Feyre was even, like, Faye. Like, he kind of knew. But once she turned Faye, he, like, s like felt the bond. I'm, like, curious as to know, like, how that all plays out with Cassian and Nesta. Because I might need to reread that chapter once I get a physical copy. Just to, like, read the actual words. Because, I don't know, I was kind of confused. <laughs> kind of confused. Just because their mating wasn't really the same. And so Nesta was like, I don't want to hear that word she doesn't like that word she thinks that if she uses that word like she won't be human anymore essentially like all of her humanity will be stripped from her and she'll like succumb to this life that she's been dealt and she's been forced to have um so she's somewhat resistant to yielding to it but she loves Cassian I know that she does she even said that before she freaking went to sleep I knew something bad was gonna happen when she was like Everything's gonna be fine when I wake up tomorrow. I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna tell him how I feel. It's gonna be good. I knew that something was about to happen. That was gonna go to crap. That was gonna ruin that. I knew it. I am really like nervous about this next part <laughs> of this book. Cause I can just tell her friends are gonna be terrified. I can't like read the book in front of me, but is her name Gwen? Gw Gwen? Who's one of the priestesses that's her friend? Um, I wish I had the book in front of me so I could read the name. Oh, excuse me. Um, but I, she, uh, she's gonna be upset. She's gonna be upset. Um, but hopefully all of them live and then they can prove those stupid a-holes wrong. The power's back on again. It's gonna go out any minute. I just <laughs> cried for a good while. Those girls. Dang, I just finished chapter 68. And them like telling each other their like stories. <laughs> Made me sob like a little freaking baby. I am ready for them to kick some butt and climb that freaking mountain. I am so ready for it. I'm a little nervous though on how this book is going to end because I only have 37 minutes left in this freaking audiobook on double time. I'm listening on 2.75 speed. I'm really nervous because Cassian is trying to get, is it Aaron? I forget his freaking name, the stupid autumn court prince or whatever. Like he's trying to get him and then the freaking queen, the freaking like human queen turned crone or whatever is like, they're trying to figure that out. There's only 37 minutes left. Like how much, how much can you resolve in that much time? How much can you resolve in that much time? So I also don't know if Farrah's gonna give birth in this one. I don't know. I don't know. We will see. I just am super excited for these women to freaking show everybody how strong they are and how stupid like Illyrian males are and how misogynistic and sexist they are. And ugh, I hate them. I am about to read the last part of this book hopefully it, it, the ending is good if it ends on a cliffhanger i will be so freaking frustrated i guess we're going to be ending this vlog the same way we started it <laughs> with candles i finished um a court of silver flames by sarah j mass in less than 24 hours <laughs> a 700 plus page book also if you hear like water sounds um i currently have my pipes running so they don't burst so i cried for a good um 
portion of the last chunk of this book. <laughs> I normally would have filmed my reaction towards the end of it, but again, no power for light to see me. I had the audiobook on my phone and that's where I filmed, so. Um, y'all not gonna get a huge sob fest like y'all did for Kingdom of Ash from me. <laughs> if you want to see me cry and you've never seen my Kingdom of Ash vlog, <laughs> you can go check that one out. <laughs> but dang, that, that scene, that chapter, I did not think that Feyre was gonna give birth in this book. I did not think that. And just like all of the major things that happened since the last time I updated you, I was like, what's gonna happen? Is this gonna be a cliffhanger? There's so much, so many things to resolve this book. I don't think it's gonna resolve itself without a cliffhanger. And I was wrong. Um, Cause a bunch of things just happened. Sarah J Mass like packed all of it in so tightly. I'm sorry, I look so creepy right now. <laughs> I'm trying not to. That scene when Nesta tells the cauldron that she'll give her power back to save Reese, Feyre, and the baby. It killed me. Oh my gosh, sobbing mess in the dark in my bed. Like, oh my gosh, that scene. And then she was telling her, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. They ended up naming the baby boy Nyx. Very interesting name. The only other book that I've ever heard the name Nyx is from the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole. Um, and that's a Valkyrie woman. I wanna go read the acknowledgements whenever I get my physical copy in because in her last book, Crescent City, she wrote in the acknowledgements that she named Rune or Run after one of J.R. Ward's characters in one of her series. So I'm wondering, did she take Nyx from another paranormal romance series? I'm very interested because she mentioned that in her acknowledgments of Crescent City. So I need to go look into that whenever I get my physical copy, which is not gonna be very soon because the South has fallen into disrepair and the apocalypse has hit <laughs> because of some snow. Don't you just love how ever since this pandemic hit, like the world has just been <laughs> crashing in on itself. I'm very curious to see or to figure out like Elias's like thing with more. Like he's like, y'all are thinking too much of me leaving more in that forest and are thinking too hard on it and it's not what it seems and Cassian's like well tell me tell me what it is and he's like well I don't want to tell you I'm gonna tell more and more's not gonna listen to me so no one's gonna know about it until she does and so I'm like hmm is the next book gonna be about more very curious if she gets with Elias no I want her to get with Vasa like everybody's talking about I think she'll get with Vasa I'm I'm kind of upset that <laughs> Sarah Tamas didn't really like put more in this book like at all like basically non-existent at the like throughout the whole book like I get that it was mostly about Cassian and um Nesta um but we got a bunch of Reese and Feyre and Az and Amryn and even Elaine in there but like I feel like more should have been a more of a major character like she was in the other book we also didn't get a lot of Lucian. That one scene with Tamlin was a freaking good scene. Screw him. <laughs> I wonder what's gonna happen to him in the other books. I wonder who the next book is going to be about. I'm very curious. I just I just want to know what's going on with Elaine and Lucian. I want to know who's gonna be with Asriel. Like, Asriel, I am so excited for a book about him. Dying for that. I want that right now. I already want to reread it. I'm so excited when I get my physical copy. I'm going to reread it physically and tab it all up to my heart's content. I am super excited here. It's probably better lighting, even though I look very creepy. Um, <laughs> I'm giving this five stars. Five stars. These books just hold so much emotion in me. Like they bring out my heart and soul when I read them. Like I break when I read these and I feel transported. Like the this book series, when I first, or just a book by Sarah J Mass, when she writes a book for the first time, every book that she writes, Crescent City was kind of hard for me to read, but once I got into the groove of it, I felt this too, where I just become transported into another world so easily, which has been amazing for the crappy time that I've had in the past couple days. <laughs> and will continue to have. I am very proud of myself that I ended up finishing this book within 24 hours or less than 24 hours. Cheers. <laughs> and I'm also proud of myself that I did it during a freaking snowstorm in Texas. Like who would have thought? Who who would have thought with with no power?
no power. Obviously, if you're watching the end of this video, you either don't care about spoilers or you've already read this book. So please let me know down below what you thought about this book. Um, be sure to check out my Kingdom of Ash reaction vlog as well. I made that whenever Kingdom of Ash came out as well. And I did one for Crescent City, if you're interested. I will link both of those down below from your viewing pleasure if you've never seen either one of those. I think my Kingdom of Ash reaction video was one of the best videos I've ever made in my entire life. I am obsessed with that video. <laughs> um, so you can check it out if you want to, but this was really fun to do. A very unique filming experience, obviously, because of the lack of power and lack of heat and um, just the cold and a snowstorm. But yeah, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. <gasps>